Did you know using a multimeter when troubleshooting low voltage electrical devices can quickly resolve common issues and reduce your time spent at the location? Having the correct tools and knowing how to use them can be valuable when troubleshooting issues at customers' locations. Hey there, I'm Rob with Residio. Throughout this video, I will cover the proper way to use a multimeter when troubleshooting. These steps can help keep down parts costs and promptly complete service calls. The reasons behind these problems could be due to electrical problems, poor wiring connections, or damaged devices. In this video, I'll be using a common security system to show how to troubleshoot with a multimeter. Some of the most common reasons for service calls on security systems are open circuits shown on keypads, checks on zones, checks on connected peripherals, and AC loss. Multimeters have various options and settings to help you read the correct voltages, continuity, and resistance of wired circuits. Choosing the correct symbol helps display the correct information on the multimeter screen. First, let's look at power loss trouble condition on the security system in front of me, AC loss. To verify AC voltage, make sure your meter is on the AC setting. On this security system, the AC loss occurs when the voltage drops below 16 and a half volts AC at any time between terminals one and two. When this occurs, the panel will display AC loss on the keypad. So as you can see here, we have the trouble condition, and when we check the voltage, it reads zero volts. There are a few things that can lead to this, including power loss, a possible defective transformer, bad wiring connections, and even pinched wires. With transformer wiring, try to always use 18 gauge two conductor wire and stay within 50 feet of the power source. When the meter reads at or above the required 16 and a half volts AC, the AC loss will disappear on the keypad. As you can see, when the voltage is above the threshold, the error does go away. Our problem has been resolved and the meter has verified that we are good to go. The next part of this tip I want to share is a fantastic recommendation for all devices connected to the bus interface. Since data-driven devices all connect to the same power and data terminals, these subsequent readings will assist with numerous problems you may encounter when working on security systems. Now let's check the DC voltage between terminals four and five to ensure that it reads 12 and a half volts or higher. This is the aux power for the entire system. If the voltage is not correct, disconnect the devices from the supply and check the output voltage on the board alone without any devices connected. If everything seems all right, add one device at a time and recheck the voltage until we locate our problem devices. The next set of readings we want to check are the data in and data out circuits. These voltages are often the culprit when we have errors like open circuit and checks on devices with this security system. If you know how to check these voltages, you can resolve many issues you could encounter in the field. To verify these two circuits are working correctly, we will measure the voltages by placing the black lead on terminal four and then the red lead on terminal six. This voltage should be zero volts or no more than half a volt. If you're seeing a voltage here, then this will require more troubleshooting. To measure the fluctuating voltage for the panel's data output, place the black lead on terminal four and the red lead on terminal seven. The voltage should be fluctuating between seven and 12 volts DC. The most important part is to make sure the voltage is fluctuating. If this is not occurring, then we have an issue with a device or wiring somewhere. The measurements we make at the panel are the same voltages we should expect at each device as well. When troubleshooting, it's recommended to isolate devices individually at the panel when possible. This method will help identify and eliminate potential problems with the field wiring and ensure your device is functioning properly. While we discussed a handful of errors on the keypad, these multimeter tips and voltages apply to any device wired to the bus interface. Lastly, let's discuss troubleshooting a zone that's in check. With zones, we need to read their loop resistance. Please remember to switch your meter to ohms when measuring resistance. When a zone goes into check or trouble on this security system, you can easily identify and diagnose problems with a multimeter. Anytime we measure resistance, you must remove the zone wiring from the powered zone circuit. The acceptable resistance on this zone is 2000 ohms plus or minus 200 ohms. If your reading is out of spec, start troubleshooting the wiring and end the line resistor. This security system uses a 2000 ohm resistor, so ensure your color band is red, black, red. Other electronic devices could use a different size resistor, so please refer to that schematic. And remember, while we showed specific situations, 
These tips on using a multimeter to quickly identify and diagnose issues is applicable to many low voltage electrical devices. For more videos like this one, please visit residioacademy.com. Thank you for watching.